Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. I'm John Tidy. It's been a long time since I've done the uh, what's new in Reaper videos. There was a bunch of small updates that came out and now all those features have kind of piled up on me and there's a lot of new features that I need to cover in these videos. So this is what's new in Reaper 5.25 up to 5.28. If you enjoy these videos, you find them helpful, please consider being a patron on Patreon, patreon.com slash the Reaper blog. Let's start off with 5.25 features in the action list. We now have support for importing and exporting OSC bindings with the Reaper keymap files. And what that means is that if you're using uh, OSC, such as a touch OSC app for iPad, you can save all of those assignments with your Reaper key maps. So if I go to export all, the OSC bindings won't be lost. Moving on, we've got increased channel count as needed on copy and paste of effects and effects chains, and increase channel count as needed on drag and drop effects to item take effects. And this just means that if you have a four channel wave file and you insert a uh, plugin on there, it's going to work on all four channels. And if you move that plugin to another track, it's going to uh, modify its channel count. Another change is storing comments with effects chains and that they won't be lost when copying and pasting. Uh, you may not have known this, but you could actually add in comments. So this is the kick. And if we copy this to another track, so copy all effects, go to this track, paste effects, and that comment is still there. There were a couple new plugins added. Uh, I'm going to insert one of those on the drum bus here. And what we're looking for is the FFT, the new FFT plugins. And they're just literally called new FFT filter. Uh, this one here, new FFT pitch experimenter, is pretty interesting. Let's hear that now on the drums. and bypassed. Very weird plugin, uh, but it's pretty cool to have these really weird things uh, available and added in for free. So that's one of those new plugins. With JSFX, they fixed the used channel detection for MIDI-only processors. Just a little bug that has been there for a while. Also with JSFX, update many stock plugins to define their I.O. And that simply means that, uh, like this JS saturation, if I go to edit this section here in pin left input, they just put that into all of the plugins. It's not something that really is... Uh, should concern anyone, but that's just something that they've updated. They've d updated um, the majority of the JSFX. Anyway, moving on. With MIDI, they added the option to export project markers as either MIDI queue or MIDI marker event types. They also support export of tempo time signature information to type zero MIDI files. So that means that when you're exporting MIDI, so file export project MIDI, there are a couple new options here. You can export as a type 0, a merged MIDI file, or a multi-track MIDI file, type 1. And your uh, markers and cues and regions and all that kind of stuff can be exported along with that. Another change is the resurround plugin. 
If you hold down uh, Control Alt, that's uh, Command Alt on the Mac, or Control Alt on the PC, you can move all of the input and output sliders at once instead of individually. So it's much easier now to scale uh, if you have six inputs or or whatever uh, it is you need. Eight inputs, I can I can gang them all together and move them at once. All right, so those are the highlights from version 5.25. Now let's move on to version 5.26. And something related to something I showed earlier, effects increase media item take channel count when inserting multi-channel effects on a multi-channel track. When you're using a four-channel plugin on a um, two-channel track, it's going to increase the channel count for the takes that are on that track. With Music XML and the notation feature, there is the support for importing and exporting multi-layer music. Uh, to be honest, I don't know what that means, but it sounds important. And probably for a few people, that is a big deal. And also with notation, they've added the action to select all notes in the staff, which seems pretty handy. Moving up to version 5.27, released on October 20th, there are several changes for the comping feature. And comping is when you are saving your edits for multiple takes on a track. I don't have anything I can show you using that feature right now, but here are the changes. Clear all comp group names when creating a new project. Improve handling of comp names with undo and cut and paste. Respect grouping when loading comp and moving active comp to top lane. Preserve comps when splitting items and various bug fixes. So comps aren't something that I use in my own personal workflow. I haven't found the need for them yet. I haven't explored what they can do fully. So uh, I can't really show you that. If comps are something that's part of your daily routine, these sound like some great changes. All right, so now something that's really cool for anyone that's doing any mixing or sound design work, really anyone that uses effects. They added a menu item for copy effects with automation, and is also bound to Control-Alt-C. So if we open up an effects chain, we can uh, copy all effects, including automation. And this is amazing. This is a, a great feature. So we can copy any effects in the chain, plus any automation that we've drawn in or written in on the track, and move that to another track. It's great. We can also drag and drop using shift control drag on PC or shift command drag on the Mac. We can drag and drop our effects, including the automation. Maybe I'll just do that right now just to demonstrate that. So put this into uh, latch mode. Okay, so I've got my uh, got my automation written there. Going to go to my drum crush bus. I'm going to command shift drag this effect onto the track, and now I've got my uh, I've got my EQ there, and I've got my automation here as well. So that works perfectly, and that's something that I'll surely be using quite a lot. Also, they've added copy and paste options to the mixer effects context menu. What that means is if you open up your mixer, you go over to the effects chains, you right click, and now there are options here, copy effects, copy effects including automation, things like that. I have previously modified my menu there. So, so what you're looking for there is effects extended mixer context. And this is the new default menu. I actually have a video on customizing this menu with this update, the 5.27 update. Some of the things that I suggested you add to your effects extended mixer context menu have already been added. Here's a big change for notation users. PDF export has been added. So we've got some MIDI here. Let's draw in some random MIDI here just so we have something to look at. We go to our menu for the MIDI editor, go to file and when we are in notation view, we can export a PDF. So go to view and musical notation. And now we can file export to PDF. 
Just put this on my desktop for now. And here is that PDF. It's got our project tempo, it has the track name, it has the project name, and our MIDI is here. Just this random stuff that I put in there. Uh, so that's really cool and helpful. And if you're writing your music notation in Reaper, this is something that's essential. And this is a feature that's been promised for several months. Great to have that. There's another change related to takes and take lanes. Include selected and grouped takes when switching takes via lane. And what this means is that if we have grouped items and we have multiple takes, we're selecting a take, it's going to work with those grouped items as well. Let me see if I can make a demo of this. Okay, so I've made a couple duplicate takes here. And you'll notice that this is across all of my drum tracks. They are These are grouped items. And when I make a selection by clicking with the mouse, all of those takes across all the tracks will link up together. So if I'm taking take three on the kick track, take three on the snare down track is also going to work. So this one small change makes comping and selecting takes so much easier. Moving up to the latest features, Reaper 5.28 released on November 7th. They've improved the soft takeover for MIDI Learn. There were some bugs in it recently. So if you're using a MIDI controller to uh, control your plugins, it's gotten so much easier. So I'll do a video on this later on, uh, but for now, just um, if you want to check it out, you grab a plugin, you touch a parameter, you go to MIDI Learn, and you move control on your control surface, your MIDI keyboard, whatever it is, and uh, that should link up. And you can go to the next track, do the same on another plugin, and you won't have to worry about them interfering with each other. Yeah, as I said, I'll do a video on that later. They've improved key bindings between Windows and Mac OS uh, when you're transferring your action list to different platforms. It should be more compatible and less uh, fixing things. If we look in the action list for input quantize, we have a whole bunch of new actions for setting the uh, setting all tracks, last touched track or selected tracks to different quantize values. So as we're tapping in on our drum pads or on a keyboard, and we're not particularly good musicians, we can use input quantize to non-destructively apply quantization to our performance. So when it plays back, it plays back in time with our other tracks. So if we're setting our input quantize to 164th, it's going to be a lot gentler than if we set it to quarter notes. This change in this version is not adding in input quantize. It has been available for quite a long time, but it's a little bit hidden in the menus. Uh, if we right click on a record arm button, we see track recording settings, input quantize format, etc. If we show that, we've got input quantize and different quantize values. Now these are also available in the action list. And remember, if you're using this, you need to use both the action to set the quantize value plus enabling it or disabling it. So these actions here and these actions here. For automation, there's a couple of changes. Drag and drop of take envelopes targets the take lane under the mouse rather than the active take, which makes a lot of sense. They've also added the option to drag and drop take envelopes to items on the same track. Adding in a take envelope, going to right click, go to take, and then choose one of the take envelopes, such as the take volume envelope. Uh, we can also double click and enable one of the envelopes here in this menu. Uh, but for now, we're going to use this one. And I'm going to draw in something random. Then we're going to take this button here. So we're going to drag this button to this other item. And what that does is copy all those automation changes from the first item to the second item. And we can actually drag that to a different track as well. So pretty neat, pretty helpful. Another fantastic change is being able to drag and drop entire effects chains right from the TCB or the effects chains in the mixer by just grabbing the effects button. I'm just gonna drag and drop. 
Uh, so I'm going from electric guitar three to electric guitar one, and we've got the EQ from electric guitar three. Super easy. Again, in the mixer, we're looking at this green effects button. This, the overhead has kind of a complex signal chain, so we're going to grab that and drag it onto any other track. Let's put it right onto the, mic the master channel. And there we go. All four of those effects were added instantly. Something that is super helpful for the Mac users, anchoring this left corner when we're uh, changing effects in the same chain. Up until this version, this window has been going all over the place, and we have to chase it just to go to the next plugin. It's been super annoying. Finally, that bug has been addressed. With the MIDI editor, there's actions to quantize note positions to specific divisions. So if we look in the MIDI editor, open up the action list by hitting the question mark key. Uh, I believe these are the new actions here. So instead of going through the quantize window, uh, we can now assign actions to quantize the selected notes to any division. Another thing in the action list is a new option to um, allow selecting the CCs under the selected notes. So if we select those notes, select all CC events under selected notes, we can run that. And there's also a toggle one, which will turn that on and off. If we're using the virtual MIDI keyboard, you might want to use this option to send all keyboard input to the virtual MIDI keyboard, which means that even if this window is not focused, our keyboard is still going to trigger the notes for our synth. What's changed in 5.28 is that you can still type in track names and things like that. So uh, we can type in anything and our virtual MIDI keyboard is not going to be affected by that. So before this update, uh, that would not work. We wouldn't be able to type in plugin preset names or track names. Now text input areas will be ignored by the virtual MIDI keyboard. Fantastic update. Really helpful change for the users of the virtual MIDI keyboard. All right, guys, that's it. You are now caught up on all of the changes for the past four versions. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.